Love it or hate it, graffiti is a reality of railroading in any era. Even if you don't like it, here's a couple of ways to handle it on your model railroad. You won't want to miss this, coming up on JC's Rip Track. Hi there, my name is John and welcome to JC's Rip Track. If this is your first time here and you're looking for tips and advice on how to turn your plastic models into something that you will see on the railroad today, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. So what do you think about graffiti? Does it belong on model railroads? And if so, how do you represent it? Please let me know in the comments section down below. If you haven't already done so, check out the first video in the series which gives an overview of a process for weathering factory painted models. This video covers the seventh step of eight, and if you stick around to the end, you can connect with my other videos in this set. The truth is, graffiti has been around for a lot longer than most people realize. In essence, once humans invented paint or ink, no flat surface was ever going to be safe again. Archaeologists have found evidence of graffiti in almost any time and era throughout recorded and pre-recorded human history. And even when it comes to railroading, graffiti is a whole lot older than we think. Yes, it took a real shift in the 60s and 70s and beyond, and that's what most of us think about when we think of graffiti. But even before that, rail workers would write on cars with chalks, and hobos would use markings to indicate and communicate with one another. So the practice on writing on rail cars beyond the original markings is much older. So regardless of what era you model, there is room and a potential for graffiti. Of course, there have always been efforts to remove it or to cover it up. And so for those of you who are fans of graffiti but would like to add a little bit more realism to your models, I've got something for you too. In fact, that's where we're going to be starting, with patches. Rail cars and locomotives can be patched for any number of reasons, whether it is covering up an old road number or logo, whether it is dressing up a field repair, or of course, whether it is covering up graffiti. Patches are simple and easy to do, and they can be done fairly quickly. The great part about patches is you don't even have to match the color of the car. That's part of the look, because it looks like rail workers have just simply covered over the area that they need with whatever paint they happen to have on hand. And that adds to the realism by adding a change or contrast in color. It also adds a lot of character. Either way, acrylic paints are best suited for patches. I recommend using ones manufactured with the intent of modeling in mind. For hand brushing, use ones that are highly pigmented. Games Workshop, Privateer Press, and Vallejo all have paints that have great selections, and they are designed to cover well. I would not use craft paints for this task, as these paints do not have enough pigment in them to cover in a thin coat. Also, I have found that Tamiya paints are better left for the airbrush. Normally, hand brushing patches are used for small things like covering up road or data markings that are no longer needed. Since we are using acrylic paints, make sure the model has a flat coat so that the paints have something to stick to. For larger patches, you can hand paint it, but an airbrush is quick and easy. In this case, mask off the areas that you want to show as patched. Make sure that the areas of the model that you don't want to be patched are masked off. When it comes to color, Choose a paint color that is close, but not an exact match to the color of the car, for the reasons that I already mentioned. Here, since you're using an airbrush, Tamiya paints are great for this, but use whatever you feel most comfortable with. Once you've completed the patch, remove the masking tape. At this stage, you may want to come back and apply another detail wash over the patched area as a way to blend it into the model a bit more. Okay, here goes. Graffiti can be applied to a rail car in a number of different ways. You can use decals, and I'm going to be showing that in a later video, but today I'm going to give you a little bit of an insight into how I can paint my own. Yes, it can be time consuming, but the end result can be well worth it. Now there's a whole lot of theory and research behind graffiti, which I won't go into in here, but in looking into it, it will really improve your game. So let's just jump right in. As with patches, make sure that the car has a clear, flat coat in order for the acrylic paints to have something to stick to. For this Saskatchewan car, I'm trying to match the prototype. Starting with the real thing is a good place to start when hand painting graffiti because it can give you ideas when you try to improvise your own later on. I found a good picture of the prototype and started to note reference points on the sides of the piece, where it starts and where it stops. I used the shape of the ribs of the car to create a reference grid to be able to transfer the design to the car. 
I started by roughly marking the points with a mechanical pencil where the graffiti entered and left the bottom, and where it stood in reference to the various markings, and then where it intersected the rib lines of the car. I then used these reference points to fill out the basic shape of the piece with a pencil. Once this was done, I used a black, fine-tipped micron pen to trace over the lines that I had already drawn. This takes some time, so don't try to rush the process. Once the basic lines are done, now it's time to start filling it in. This is where the quality of the paint is important. Use a highly pigmented, opaque acrylic paint. In my case, I'm using Games Workshop Ceram Light White to fill in the drawn shapes to match the graffiti. It's a good base color and covers well. If the graffiti is a brighter color, like red or yellow, it's a good idea to start with white to begin with, especially if the car is a darker color, such as this green. When painting, make sure that the paints are thinned down enough with water to apply to the model without leaving brush marks, but not so thin that it doesn't cover enough. Thinner is better than thick, because you can always come back and do touch-ups after the first application dries. Once the graffiti shape is filled in, come back with the outline color, in this case black, and retrace the lines from the micron pen with a very thin brush. Fill in the shadowed areas where appropriate, and really, this is all the basic technique is, but most large graffiti works also have various embellishments on them, so once the base shape is done, you can come back and work on the fancier bits, like the purple cloud or the yellow outline in this example. Here's a bonus tip. In addition to the large pieces of graffiti, you can also do small tags using the micron pens or, if you're lucky enough to find one, a thin white-tipped gel pen. You can use these to handle the thinner lines or embellishments of scribbled on tags that graffiti writers use as a quick way to put their mark on a car or even as a sign of their work. Little tags like this aren't as spectacular as a larger work, but they can add that extra bit of realism. One last note when applying graffiti, remember that graffiti writers are standing on the ballast beside the railroad tracks and reaching up to the train in order to spray. Think about the individual doing the spray and how far they can reach up and also how far the spray is. Generally, you're looking at maybe at best about 7 to 10 feet off the ground at most. Most likely you're going to be working within about a strip, wheels included, up to about 8 feet off the ground. That means they're only going to be doing the lower part of the car. Now, some of them are particularly brave, and they will actually climb the ladders on the side and reach over and spray. But unless they have some special rigging, which sometimes they do, the graffiti is only going to be along the bottom. Even if you're a big fan of graffiti, it should not be overdone. Check out your inspiration source and how it might fit on your layout. One thing to keep in mind is if you go out and do some rail fanning, count the number of cars that have graffiti on them versus the ones that don't. That can give you a good idea, at least in terms of your own railroad, as to what kind of ratio you would want as to have graffiti and those that don't. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, remember these techniques can be used on structures too. Check out the other videos in this series, and if you're interested in getting the most out of your painting and weathering projects, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. And of course, as this channel grows, I'll be getting into more and more detail with each and every technique. And so thanks for watching. Good luck, and may you keep on track.